Hey family, hope all is well. Hope you have had an amazing Friday. Listen, it is time for J Talks. Last week we talked about confidence and I kind of want to continue in that vein. Um, we're in a day and a time where we have to have confidence in ourselves. For those of you that are of... Um, that are Bible believers, you know the Bible says, cast not away thy confidence. We have to have confidence not only in God, but also in ourselves. Um, we have to have confidence that we are able to do what we desire to do, what we've been called to do, what we are purposed to do on the earth. And our confidence has to be whether anybody stands with us or not, that we will do it. It doesn't mean that uh, people won't support us. It doesn't mean that people won't believe in what we are doing. But we have to do it whether people like it or not, whether people believe or not, whether people like it or not. Because we are uh, confident in what it is that we are doing. Um, Part of that deals with our perception, how we see things, how we think about things, and most of all, how we think of ourselves. Many of us, um, we have allowed external things to change our perception of ourselves. We have allowed what other people, what organizations, what... Um, Things outside of us have told us we should believe about ourselves, that if we haven't done this by a certain age, uh, that we are uh, not successful. Uh, many of us get caught in that when it comes to marriage. Well, you're 30 and you haven't gotten married yet. You're going to be, uh, you know, an old maid or you're going to always be a bachelor. Nobody told me I had to be married before I was 30. I'm confident that when I get married, not only will I be ready emotionally, not only will I be married uh, ready physically, but I'll be ready financially. Financially, too often people are jumping into things to satisfy other people but don't have any confidence, any wherewithal to see things through because they don't have confidence that they'll do it. Um, I'm a man, so I'll deal with the man side of things. There are men that have never seen successful relationships and because they've never seen successful relationships, they don't believe that they can have one. And because they don't believe they can have one, because they've never seen it, they don't know how to think uh, of being a good husband, a good father, how to be a good man, what they do then is because of their perception, they'll begin to sabotage every relationship. They'll begin to sabotage and they'll begin to self-destruct and not even realize that's what they're doing. They won't see a problem in what's happening because it is normal for them to see dysfunction and dysfunction be normal. We have to understand that we have to change our perception and sometimes that's not the easiest thing to do because our perception is based upon what we've experienced and sometimes if we haven't experienced the opposite, we can't see the opposite, but that means that we have to rely in our faith. We have to rely in our God. We have to rely in our uh, our ability to change and mature. Let me stop right there. For those of you that post things like, I didn't change, I grew. Growing is a change. For those of you that are posting things like people saying, I'm acting funny, I'm not acting funny, I'm just uh, in a different, that's change. And change is necessary. And we must grow up, we must change, we must mature for the purpose of being better people. And we even our perception must change. What I saw of myself at three, I don't see at myself as in at 32. Now that I'm 32, I can see myself differently because I've experienced differently. Yes, there have been many external factors that have made me, uh, that gave me a negative perception of myself. But as I stopped to realize that I had accomplished things that I had never seen anybody do, I had never seen anybody write a book, but I've not only written books, but I've published four. I had to take confidence in my own accomplishments, but that meant that I had to stop to see what I had accomplished. Do you not know that your confidence is built in celebrating every step of the way? If you set a goal, every time you get closer to that goal, you need to celebrate. Am I saying throw a party at every step? No, but I'm saying congratulate yourself. Celebrate that moment so that you will carry the perception of your ability to accomplish. Don't allow other people's failures to become your perception of your own success. 
I can't help that you didn't make your goal, but I'm going to keep pushing to get to my goal, even if I need to stop and regroup on how to get the goal accomplished. My perception is I'm going to accomplish the goal. I am confident in my ability. I am confident in that which I am putting forth in effort to get this thing done. So we have to learn how to deal with our perception of ourselves, how to deal with external things. Last week I told you, you got to take criticism and turn it into creative power. Yes, they'll say that didn't look good on you. Baby, take it and turn it into creative power and make your confidence reflective in your next outfit. They'll say you can't do it because you don't have this and you don't have that. Take it and turn it into creative power, not to prove this them wrong, but to prove that you are what you say you are, to prove that you are able to do what you believe that you are supposed to be doing. Don't work to prove people wrong. Don't work to be in competition with other people. Work to fulfill the thing that you are working at. Work to fulfill your goal and your purpose. If you see it and you know this is your passion, work at it. Let what other people say become a a driving force, not because you want to do something to prove them wrong. Because when you work to prove people wrong, you have gotten away from your passion and you are now attempting to defend what you're not even working at. Your perception must come into alignment with your ability, must come into an alignment with your effort, and that will then fuel your passion. You got to have confidence in what it is that you are passionate about. Those of you that are passionate about starting a business, stop looking at everybody else and what everybody else is doing. Write your vision. Get your things in order. Make sure you're registered with your state. Make sure you get a bank account. Make sure that you have a, a date to launch. Why? Because you are in preparation for the fulfillment of whatever your business is. Too many of us have great, wonderful ideas, but because we don't have good perception of ourselves, we hold on to them and we never move to make them happen. You got to get started. You can't get to a multi-million dollar business without getting started. You cannot get to uh, feeding the masses without getting started. You got to have uh, a perception change. How do you see yourself? This is your passion. You want to ensure that people are taken care of and people can eat and can get a hot meal, but you haven't even started cooking. You haven't even started finding out where people are that need to be fed because your perception of yourself is that it won't work. It, it's not going to be good. Somebody else can do it even though it's your passion. Your perception has to change and it must align with your confidence and your confidence will then fuel your effort and the three together will create the success that you are looking for. There are many of you that have a book in you. Please understand that we are in a literal time where writing books will become your business business card. People are ask you, have you written a book? Do you have a book published? Why? Because it becomes your voice. It becomes your introduction to the world. And if you haven't gotten one done yet, it's not because of anything other than your perception of yourself. I'm not a good writer. Nobody wants to read what I'm writing. Or you, uh, listen, perception will also cause you to overthink. Now, you, you believe you can write a book, but now you're overthinking what to write about. Now you're overthinking how to get it done. Well, I don't have this and I don't have that, but you got to start with the book first. You got to start with writing. You got to get started before you look at all of these other factors, but your perception has to change. Your perception has to become balanced, that you're able to do it. And watch this, that once you get your part done, which is the book, that you are able to get other people involved that are going to help you and be honest and push you to production, to push you to manifestation, to get you in the places that you didn't think you would be, or even places that are spoken over your life that you didn't know how to get into. I think about myself. I bless God every day for being able 
able to have written four books, but my perception had to change. My first book started out as a class that did not happen. So it, my first book was actually notes for the class and God allowed me to continue to write and kept giving me revelation. Well, I didn't know what it was to publish. I didn't know what it was. I, all I, I didn't even know that there were different types of publishing, traditional publishing, self -pub I didn't know anything about that. I, I didn't know about ebook shit. I didn't, I didn't know, but I knew that once I understood that a book was coming forth, that the book was going to be necessary, that the book was going to be read by people, that it was going to get in the hands of, of people that were going to be able to take it into other places. I had that confidence, but I didn't know the rest of the things that needed to be done. But because I started sharing my vision, because I started sharing bits and pieces of the book, because uh, I shared some of the book on Facebook, uh, Barbara Dean Franklin, my auntie, I love her dearly, she introduced me to one of her friends that she used to work with who started a publisher company the year before. We got together, her name is Darlene Carol Dixon, I love her dearly. That is uh, my friend, my, I call her my publishing genius. She has done such amazing work with me. But if I had not gotten the book done, if I had not shared it, if I did not trust Barbara Dean uh, Franklin's uh, relationship with Darlene, we wouldn't be in this place because it was because I started the work, because I was confident in the work, because I was confident to share, because I was confident to receive the connection, because Barbara became that bridge for me to meet Darlene. Darlene and I met and it, we, our first meeting ended up being about four and a half hours and we just started talking about God and talking about what the process was like and we started and we got moving and we started pushing and listen, she corrected some things in the book. She, she edited, she formatted, she proofread, she, she went over it with a fine tooth comb. I went back over it and, and we start and we got done what was the goal, which was a published book. That was in 2012. That the Watchman, which is the title of that book, has gone around the world, has sold on five continents because I had confidence enough that what God had given me was going to be beneficial for other people. But I had to change my perspective. I had to change how I saw it. I had to change my ability because watch this. I knew in the fourth grade that I was going to write books. I didn't know how that was going to work, but in the fourth grade, I knew that was going to happen. My perspective of my ability had to grow, had to change, had to mature. Because now it's no longer I wrote it. Now it's going to be published. Now it's going to be in the hands of other people. And yes, I had to overcome some external issues with my writing because some things happened to me in in response to my writing that I didn't know how to handle. And I had to be healed so that I could be able to put this work out in its totality. And those that follow, I am now on my fourth book and I am still growing as a writer. I am still maturing as a writer. I am still challenging myself as a writer, as an author, to be able to do not only what is best for my quote unquote brand, but what is best for the people receiving. I want you to be able to pick up a book and receive, and then I want you to put it down and come back in another season and pick it up again and receive some more and then put it down. And why? Because as long as you are able to change with the material and the material is still able to bless you, it is going to be able to, to stay on your bookshelf. It's going to be able to stay in rotation in your reading. I don't want it to just get on the bookshelf and collect dust. I want it to be a staple in your your life. And I have met people that have read the books that have been published and they say, I read it and I've read it and I read it again and I got this and then I got this and then I got this. And that's more of a blessing than I ever thought would be because initially I wasn't sure if the books were going to sell. But now I have testimony that my, my work, the work that I am confident in, the work that my perspective and my effort work to put together has now sold on five continents. Has been in the hands of mighty 
people in church, out of church, people have received it. But my confidence, my perspective, and my effort had to work together to bring all of those things together. I had to get to a point that I trusted my ability to write. Two of the books that I have published were written in five days because I was confident that this material needed to be out and needed to be in the hands of the people. And I was confident that what I was writing, how I was writing, and the time in which I was writing, it was necessary for people to receive. What is your perspective of yourself? How do you see yourself? Are you still looking at yourself from the lenses of other people and other people's opinion? Or have you found in yourself the ability to look through your own lens at your own self? If you Come on here. Do you look in the mirror and you see what everybody else says? Oh, you're fat, you're skinny, you're too dark, you're too this, you're too that. Or when do you look in the mirror, you can see you and you can say, I am the best me I can be and I'm getting better every day. Or are you looking for what other people say? Are you looking for your flaws? Or are you looking for your greatness? Are you looking for your greatness or are you looking for a devalued sense of self based upon what other people have to say? There was a time I couldn't look in the mirror at all because I was looking from external lenses about me. When I took off the external lenses, when I refocused, it took a minute. You, you know how you have your eyes are refocusing after you've been in the dark and the light come on. Uh, it, it took a second for me to rebalance in my focus, in, in my sight, in my perspective of myself. But now I don't look for what other people have to say. I look for what I have to say. I look for what God is saying about me. And anything that does not line up with what I believe of myself, anything that does not line up with what has been spoken of me by the God I serve, the Father in heaven that I receive on a daily basis, I reject it. You say, doesn't matter. What... I believe matters. And if you say something that I don't believe, I can reject it because I'm guarding myself. So I, my perspective is not skewed. So I'm not wounded by your words because I can only be wounded if I allow your words to penetrate beyond my ability to receive or reject what you're saying. So we have to get into a better place in our own perspective of ourself, of our ability, of our gifts. One thing that I had to do is one day I literally had to stop and I had to list all of the things that I had accomplished. All of the things that I expected of myself and all of the things that I did that I wasn't even looking for. I had to stop and look at I graduated high school, top 11% of my class. I was number 42 or 452. Amazing. I was a part of the National Honor Society for high school students. I was a part of who's who of America's high school students. That's something that, that is amazing. But I didn't realize how great of an accomplishment that was because I was just going through the motions. I was just doing what I did. But when I stopped to look back at that, it, it gave me another boost in my confidence because I'm accomplishing things. I've written for two national magazines. I've taught for different uh, Christian universities. I've, I've, I've done the work. I've traveled the country. Carrying the word of God. I've, I've published these four books. These four books have allowed me to be on the radio, on TV. I've done things that many people don't accomplish. And I'm not saying that because they didn't accomplish it. I'm saying it because I didn't even realize I could and I did. My confidence is in my ability, in my gift, and in my effort. So what I've already accomplished, hey, when I'm working on a goal, and it feels like I'm not going to make it. Sometimes I have to go back to the things I've already accomplished, which means I have to recognize that I've accomplished them so that when I confront the thought that I can't, 
I remember what I've already did. If I did that, I can do this. If I did that, I can do this. So work at your perspective. Your perspective is going to affect your confidence and your effort. But the three of them together is going to produce your success. Remember last week I told you confidence is the building block of success. Well, your confidence is enhanced by your perspective. And your effort is enhanced by your perspective and your confidence. Don't allow anything or anyone to convince you that you can when you can. Don't allow time to convince you that it's not going to happen because delayed doesn't mean denied. It just means sometimes you want things to happen now and it may happen in another time. Your perspective is going to deal with everything that is happening around you, everything that's happening for you and everything that's happening to you. Learn how to turn it into confidence and turn that confidence into effort and you will walk in success. Perspective. Listen, I pray that this has touched you, that it's encouraged you, that it's challenged you. Take this time to just look at your perspective. If you need to write the things that you've accomplished, write the things that have been done by your effort. And remember, if you did that, you can do this. Listen, I want to send out a special birthday greeting to my big sister, to my friend, to my prayer partner, to my accountability down there in Salisbury, North Carolina. I want to wish Carolyn Archie a happy 60th birthday. I pray that your day has been awesome as you are awesome. Let this 60th year be one of overflow, power, and prosperity. I decree that you're going to experience life like you've never experienced it before. Happy, happy birthday. I love you. I love you. I love you. Family, I want you to be blessed. I want you to be prosperous and I want you to be productive. Until next week, see you later. Not only am I the host of this amazing talk show, I am also a published author and I want you to go and order your copy. I want you to go and get your ebook copy. I want you to get these books and put them in your personal library. Uh, the Watchmen, uh, the Exposition of the Tabernacle, uh, the Biography of Prophets, and the Gatekeeper's Manual. These are books that you want to have in your personal library. They're going to help you uh, in spiritual matters. It's going to help you um, do uh, some things as far as those that are expecting to do some changes and to learn more. Uh, you want to get these books, you can get them at Amazon.com, BarnesandNoble.com, Walmart.com. You want to get them in your hand. You want to get them for your Kindle, for your Nook. You want to get them for your ebook reader. Take the time and get these books. Appreciate it greatly. Be blessed.